Hello, everybody. Jake Raby here, Air Cool Technology. I just wanted to go live here real quick. I'm doing the internal inspection of the Sumabore cylinder test engine. And um, I don't know really how many of you guys have been following this, but I've been working on this now for about 20 months in total. Uh, myself and Charles at Ellen Engineering, as well as Lake Speed at Total Seal Piston Rings, have been working together to develop Sumabore cylinders for the aftermarket. Uh, so Sumabore is a spray-on plasma cylinder surface, and basically it's something that's never been done in a production world in the automotive aftermarket. We're actually spearheading this for the entirety of the automotive aftermarket, and we're going to be applying it to Porsche engines first, which we've actually already done with a water-cooled M96 engine. So what we have here is the internals of the test engine, and this test engine has seen 69 hours on the dyno. So the it was built from all used parts. The only thing that was new in the engine was a few of the bearings. The rod bearings were new. The main bearings were new. They were coated. I'm going to go over that here in a second. And, of course, the Sumabore cylinders, which you see here in front of us, also were new. Um, so the whole point of this is to use a very simple engine that we can tear down very quickly and we can leave it on the dyno. We can change cylinders out. Um, I did everything on this engine from running one half of it with Nicosil cylinders and the other half to Sumabore to running both sides of Sumabore, running different piston rings from side to side, um, all sorts of things, changing the surface finish of the cylinders from side to side looking for consumption, looking for chamber sealing, you know, looking for all those things and efficiency. The one thing I did not look for was horsepower, because at this point, it doesn't matter what the horsepower number is. What matters is cylinder seal. And the endurance testing we've been able to do with these parts has been very critical to ensure that we've got the right surface finish on the cylinders, and we've got good cylinder sealing with the piston rings we're using. So we used uh, about seven different profiles of piston ring. We used four different ring tensions, um, you name it, and I've used this engine for it. So now, since we got quite a few people on, I'm just gonna give you a brief overview of the parts. Now again, all used parts, this crankcase has blown up three different times as a test engine. It's, it's slung rods, it's been welded up, it, it's had everything done to it. It is a complete sacrificial engine. That, that's the whole, whole thing about this. It, it was built to die. Uh, it was built to be sacrificed for science, basically. So what mattered was it was a good platform to test the cylinders. What didn't matter is if it leaked any oil. It also didn't matter if it, you know, had any longevity, obviously, because we're running this thing very hard. So before I show you what you've got to see in front of you here as far as wear goes, Keep in mind, this engine saw 69 hours of runtime on the dyno. And during that, we actually had a scenario where it was ran for about four hours solid at over 5,000 RPM. Running an air-cooled engine at two-thirds throttle uh, for that amount of time is absolute hell on the components, especially when everything is basically used and come out of other engines and it's a sacrificial engine. So... I did coat some bearings and other bearings I did not coat. I did not coat the rod bearings in a couple cylinders. This is one of the non-coated ones. Still looks really good considering it was seeing a 280 degree oil temperature at the end of that test. Uh, again, I didn't care if it failed. I didn't care if it blowed up. I didn't care what happened. Um, the main bearings look beautiful. They have the PC2 coating on them that we use on all the engines. And they're beautiful. You wouldn't think they have any runtime on them. So this bearing is seen literally nowhere on the bearing surface. It's only seen somewhere on the sacrificial coating. Okay, you can see that we got a little bit of shuffling going on here, even though this has been shuffle pinned. Um, we got a little bit of shuffling going on. I would expect that with an engine that saw 5,000 RPM for over four hours. Um, most engines, air-cooled engines, simply would not live through that. It takes one hell of an engine to live through that kind of load. Um, camshaft, it was a used camshaft, uh, a webcam from probably about 15 years ago. It had a genuine set of Johnson lifters with it. I'll go over here and show you guys the lifters. Um, they also are beautiful. So no, no wear there, What you see here, it looks like wears just oil, okay? So they're beautiful. They've got probably about 50,000 miles on them on top of what we've seen here. Um, and this part of the crankcase, if you guys were following what I was doing, 
about after the 5,000 RPM test, it formed a huge crack on each side of the cylinder register. And you see it here and you saw it there, okay, on both sides. Now, if you look across, look at these studs, the whole case has been tweaked because it failed. And it failed, one reason it failed is because this is a later engine and it has a big opening here for windage, okay? So the earlier blocks, like the early 17s, this was all filled. It was solid across here. And that's the reason I like to use those for my really big engines is because they have a lot more meat in this area, a lot more real estate, if you will. So that's something that's critical because this block failed. I actually ran the last set of tests with the block fail because I could not sacrifice uh, my one factor at a time testing just for a crack. So I let it leak oil and I just dealt with it and it was pouring oil by the time it was all said and done. So look how jacked up these studs are because the register area is all uh, incorrect. So I'm, instead of starting with another case, I'm going to fix this case. And, and I've got to do that because there's been so much work done to this case to facilitate the sumo bore. So it has 911 squirters in it. It's been modified for my dry sump oil system. And again, it's a sacrificial engine. I'm not going to go to the ends of the earth to make it perfect. It won't look very good. But at the same time, this engine can expire in a very vivid way at any point in time while I'm doing this test work. Um, so also, you'll see here that this bearing does not have any coating on it. Okay, And you see that you've got quite a bit of wear going on. And the engine had straight cut gears as well. So typically that would take all the thrust away and you'll see the thrust bearing over here. Now I purposely didn't do double thrust on this because I wanted to see what was going to happen. And the thrust was still good, but you see the bearings that weren't coated saw a lot more wear on the surface than the ones that are coated. These have no wear on them. Like the coating is not even, not even compromised. Same thing on that main bearing, same thing on this main bearing. Okay. Um, so this one has a little tiny, tiny haze of wear on this cam bearing, but not very much. So we love performance coatings here. All of my engines get a, a whole host of performance coatings and the stuff works. Um, again, looking at this rod bearing that wasn't coated, it still looks really good. Okay. Especially for 69 hours of runtime with four hours at f over 5,000 RPM. Um, so now I want to show you the sumo bore cylinder. And these things, uh, they still look new, okay? After all those hours, there's not a scratch in here. I've just cleaned this up. This is what we have to look forward to in the future, not just from 914 and Type 4 engines, but we're also doing this with Porsche M9X and 9 Alpha 1 engines, which are the, the newer, more modern engines in the Porsche lineup that are having cylinder problems. So we're actually using this engine as our primary engine for the development of the sumo bore cylinder technology because it allows us to take it apart so quickly and to get results in one day that would otherwise take us months to be able to achieve, okay? Um, so I just wanted to share with this stuff with you guys so you can see what's going on with it. I'm going to pretty much just clean it up, fix the block where it's cracked on the other side, and I want to slap it back together just like it was because we've got another round of sumo bore testing coming up in about four weeks. Uh, so I'm waiting on some different rings to come in uh, before we get on with that. So I'll show you guys a little bit of what we've done for the rings. Um, I've got boxes and boxes and boxes of rings that we went through. We've done everything from gapless to, to total conform rings, um, different ring tensions. I got another whole box full of stuff here. Lake at Total Seal just sent me those again. Um, you know, we've just got a ton of stuff that we're throwing at this and just paying attention to what we see from a wear perspective and cylinder seal. So I learned a tremendous amount about what this sumo bore cylinder technology wants for break-in oil, a tremendous amount. And it is absolutely non-conventional what we've seen. So conventional break-in oils that we've been using made this perform worse. Procedures for break-in that we've done in the past that were successful made this worse. Um, so we are having to forget everything we've known and experience as much as possible and put all this together. So if you guys want to listen to a podcast that's dedicated to this, tomorrow, Hidden Horsepower, the podcast, you can look 
for that on the Apple Store and wherever you get your podcast. But it's going to be released tomorrow. And I was the guest on uh, Hidden Horsepower with Lake Speed Jr. And we went over a lot of the technical jargon about what we've done with this and what we've seen. So that will be released tomorrow. And um, make sure you tune into that. Hidden Horsepower is a great show all about making horsepower and making engines live of all kinds, not just Volkswagen or Porsche. Because what we're doing with this engine is getting a lot of it, a lot of interest from the entire automotive aftermarket, not just Porsche, not just Volkswagen, but, you know, Chevy guys, Ford guys, circle track guys, everybody's paying attention to this because nobody knows anything about it. And we are blazing a trail that hasn't been blazed in the automotive aftermarket. So just wanted to show you guys all this stuff and I'm going to take the rest of it apart, clean it up and fix that block and throw it back together again. So Keep following us here at Rabies Air Cool Technology and Flat Six Innovations.